All right, so first of all, the battery. So this came in the, as a separate parcel from Poland, separate to the motor. Um, took me a couple of hours to charge it up. Um, I think from, from flat it will take around about four hours or something to charge up. It's got the indicators across the top here, works fine. And it does have a lock on it, because this is actually two parts. So there's the, the tray on the bottom. Just unlock that, and then it'll clip like this. So this is what's going to be put onto the bike. Um, this is kind of like a bit of a bevel, a bit of a, a dish. Um, and the idea is you put two Jubilee clamps over there and over there, and it goes onto the frame tube, or you use your water bottle cage uh, holder, you know, the two M6 bolts that hold that on. And the idea is because the batteries are as expensive as the motor kit, you want to be able to take them off and, you know, also make sure they don't get stolen and also, you know, to charge it up inside or whatever. I have to say, I'm going to weigh this battery in a moment, but I have to say that if this thing was being held on by those two M6s, I would have serious concerns about how much, you know, how much, how long those M6s would last with the weight of this battery. This battery is very, very heavy. I'm surprised at how heavy it is. It's heavier than the motor. And just having two little bolts over here, I just think, yeah, I don't know how long this thing would stay in one piece, especially if you are riding off-road or on rough roads or that sort of thing. Let me go and weigh the battery now, and that'll be the, the next one. So there it is, hanging on the world's most accurate weighing device. It's telling me 5.7 kilos feels like it's more but yeah that includes the the mounting tray as well so and this is the the charger and let's say you're only supposed to use this charger which i can understand it's got this big looks like a half inch almost a coaxial type setup and that plugs into this port here and then it charges it up um, yeah, it's, it's your standard thing with a battery charger. It's just quite an industrial sized one. You know, what's it telling me? Lithium-ion battery charger model, whatever. Input 100 to 240 VAC. Output, DC output is 58.8 volts and 4 amps. Red is charging, green is full. Pretty straightforward. The only thing I had to do for the UK is get a little plug. And then it also came with these two very long Jubilee straps in there. These look like, um, this is what's going around the frame to protect it from the Jubilee clips. And that was the battery pack. All right, let's start with the box then. So it says 625, I'm not sure it's a 625, but maybe it's a 325. But instruction manual. This was included in the box, um, which I think is because I don't, I have disc brakes instead of these, you know, these standard um, cable operated brakes. So I think these are brake sensors, which cuts the drive to the motor. I um, have no idea what this is. It's almost like a, almost like a key card or something. But I guess I'll figure out sooner or later. Um, Front sprocket, 46 tooth, which is the same as my bike. The, the key difference here for me is that the motor will be independent of the sprocket in one direction. So normally on a on your standard bike, the crank, these things, they are part of this cluster here, the part of the star-shaped thing. With this, it's separate. So what that means is when you're using the throttle, you can keep your feet still and you know the motor can turn turn the sprocket and the chain without turning the crank. I'm probably not explaining that right, but you guys will get to know when I put it together. You'll get to know what it means. So yep, yeah, crank, crank and sprocket. Take those two cranks out. That's the throttle. So that goes over the handlebar, 
and then it's just a thumb operated throttle and then like I say two two brake levers nicely wedged in there um, for cable operated brakes which I don't have so they will stay out of out of the way open this up open that up then we get to the, the headlight which is a nice little handy thing. I guess that's it's good to have a headlight, it seems that you have such a huge battery. And then also a nice little tail light. Hopefully they're, they're bright enough. And there's the controllers. So this, this is gonna be a bit of a challenge with this one. Um, so this controller is designed to fit on, a, on your handlebars, um, kind of like the standard handlebar. Uh, lateral handlebar, I guess. My handlebars are vertical, so it'd be sitting sideways. So I'm going to have to figure out a way to make a little bracket to, you know, mount that on the top. It's got the controls, which increases or decreases the pedal assist. Turns it on, turns it off. Looks like it turns the lights on as well. So that's that lot. And bunch of tools, screwdriver, I don't see a, a BB set tool, fortunately I bought one of those, and then a bunch of cables. So it's going to be really interesting to see, you know, what the full length of these cables are, because I'm quite concerned that the motor and the battery will be quite far apart, and I'm going to need, you know, an extended length on the, on the motor. So just move this out of the way a bit and put the camera down. And now we've got the motor. So it doesn't say 625 or 325 or Bafang or anything on it. Um, normally there's like a little Bafang 325 or 65 on the front of it. Um, 68 millimeter BB set, as you would expect. And that sits turning it around here. Um, that's what I mentioned about the front sprocket, right? So your your um, your crank is independent of the motor um, so like I say yeah the crank can stay still and the motor can spin the the front sprocket and give you drive um, I'm gonna have to measure you know what is the offset from the center line um, and it's an interesting one because a lot of these motors when you put them on a standard bike um, they sit out in front so if you're on the left side of the bike now, and that's pretty much where the motor, you know, the, the, you, you would typically have a, a front frame tube going up to the headstock in this direction. You'd have your, your uh, seat post pole going up in this direction, and then a chain stay coming back from the BB set. Now with the trike, none of that's there, right? There's only a single um, 60 mil tube that runs up to the BB set. So I can have this motor sticking out the front of the bike, or potentially I can turn it all the way around. So it's sitting like that, you know, above, or the other way around, below um, the boom that sits out of the front of the bike. Um, obviously it's not gonna affect my pedaling, um, but I think my biggest concern right now is the length of these cables and this, the weight of this thing. So I might end up taking off this this cover, I mean, it's just a cover for a standard bike, just in case you, you know, you grind out the cables on the ground. I might take that off just to be able to pull these cables further back, um, you know, towards me on the trike. So it'll make more sense when I get over to the, when I get to the bike and start taking it apart. Um, yeah, there's the motor and it is a lump and I'm going to weigh it as well. I'll just suspend it from there. Everything seems to be reasonably well made. Um, it's not it's not cheap junk, you know. You, sometimes you get a feeling for these things, but it's it seems to be quite well made. So I'm 
pretty happy with it so far. But let's see what else is in the box. Some more parts and a what looks to be a cable plug, and some sort of screw, it's probably for the, the headset, the BB set tool, um, a long torque wrench, and this. Yeah, I think I don't know why they're giving me two of those, but I know there's a most guys put the put a Jubilee clip through here because I think when you bolt it onto the BB set under the frame. I think the torque reaction of the motor, when you give it full throttle, I think it kind of twists around the BB set. And you don't want this thing moving. So what they normally do is they take a Jubilee clip and they put it on the, the frame tube that runs up to the headstock just to make sure that the motor doesn't move at all. So, again, I'm not sure if that's going to be a problem, but if it is, it'll rotate back. And I'll put the BB, the Jubilee clip around the, the frame boom, make sure it doesn't uh, cause any problems. That, I think, is the speed sensor. Yeah, so it's got a, it's got a little magnet for your, your wheel spokes. And I think without this, I'm not sure the motor will actually work. Then we got some brackets, which I believe go somewhere on the motor to clamp it into the BB set. Ah, there we go. So it is a 325. So that... Um, just plugs onto the side of the motor over there. Fascinating. And that's it. That's the box empty. So now, now's the trick, right? So, like I say, the light's got to come off. Um, it's a 68 mil. I've got to take all of the um, cranks and BB set out, take off all of that. The battery over here wouldn't be, I think it would be okay. It shouldn't interfere with my legs. I mean, it's not too bad. Um, ideally, you know, you put the battery over here and you've got a long run, you know, to the motor and I don't think the cables are going to be long enough. Um, what else was I thinking? So if the offset of the chain, you know, from the center line of the boom, if that's either too far out or too far this way, I don't think that's going to be a problem because, you know, this, this is a tricycle, so it has three chains. Um, so the you know there's a long way back to the the first uh, sprocket there before it hits the the rear sprockets on the wheel. Moving it around is not going to be as big of a problem um, as what you would see on a normal bike. Um, the as I said the the handlebars are vertical. So what I've had to do what I've had to do over here is is drop both of the levers a little bit down to give me a lot of stick out. Um, on the left side, I'd like the on and off button and the, the increase or the decrease of the pedal assist. And then that, you know, that little display somehow oriented vertically. I want to see it over here. And then on that side, I'm just going to have the, the throttle. That's got the single brake, which is this lever here, which operates both the discs. And then somewhere on the disc, I think I'm going to put in a you know, speed sensor somewhere over here onto the wheel or onto the actual disc brake itself or whatever it may be. Um, so yeah, it's a bit different. I've got my work cut out for me. I'll have to take off this existing light. But yeah, um, we'll see how it goes. So I'm getting that thing out, the bottom bracket. Wow. That was fun. Glad I had the right tools, which is this thing. But yeah, it took the uh, the long breaker bar to undo the drive side. It's like fun and games. Anyway, moving on. I've just pushed it in there. I think that's the config I'm going to go with. 
um, in terms of the uh, you know the where it can be fitted I guess you could also fit it all the way around underneath there um, but then you know you've got what you want to have is that that I guess the Jubilee kit goes around here to stop the motor from swinging in that direction under torque you know so once you move it away from there there's nothing for it to grab onto like I say a normal bike would have a frame post going up in this direction for for the headstock and then a, a seat post going up in this direction and this would just be the chain stay going back to the rear axle and most of the motors fit around about there but I'm going to rotate this one all the way back to there and well I'm going to try to anyway I need to read the manual now see what the next okay is. so mounted um, one thing I've noticed is the crank arms are a little bit longer than the standard ones which affects my chain run um, hopefully it's not too much of a problem but if it is I may have to take out a few um, links in the chain because because this thing is going to be coming a bit back because my legs are too far extended which makes the chain too slack which um, is a problem so next step is to put together the all of this cable work either underneath here which is probably the neatest way I could possibly run it next to the motor there up in the gap that's a bit tight near the pedal so I don't know if I want to do that so I'll probably just run it underneath here and then you know a whole bunch of zip ties down there and then the battery that's going to be an interesting interesting mount point maybe there maybe it's where the bar the the bag is I'll have to see but just working my way through the instructions and they say go on to the display information first clamp that to a bar I won't do that but yeah and so we go on but we're getting there slowly but surely um, so far pretty easy it's like I say getting the bottom bracket out, out of the frame that was probably the hardest part so far then I just need to figure out what I can do with those cables um, if they're going to be long enough to allow me to put that where that bag is which would be a nice place for it but yeah we'll just see how it goes right that's an interesting place for the battery but of course it's not going to reach all the way back to there because the cables are too short does it interfere with my legs no not really um, I look at it from the front you'll see what I mean the pedals are sufficiently wide for your legs to pass on either side um, it's interesting I could bring it further towards the motor and because obviously your legs taper towards the seat um, and that would even give me more clearance but at the moment I can ride with that quite easily it's not going to you know impact any of the riding that I'm doing so anyway this is just a test fit I think I'll go back to the supplier and ask them if they've got longer cables because um, these are complex cables they're multi-core cables you know it's not just a two core or a three core some of them have six cores in them or it seems to have six cores in them so that's uh you know it's it's not something that I would want to try to splice myself I think that would be a yeah that would be a recipe for disaster so I'll go back to the vendor and ask them if there is a longer um, cable length you know between the motor and the battery and I think ultimately putting it on the back is probably the best place but we'll see we'll see how it goes I just want to get it all started and running and working and then we'll look at the you know the optimal way of doing it okay so we got a bit further um, it's a bit of a funny setup that we had to put in place here so obviously not having standard handlebars um, this bracket at the back here is just not good um, it's designed for flat bars and of course my handlebars are vertical so that's not ideal but 
I put this um, mountain bike, uh, I guess it's a handlebar protector thing, onto the end of the bar, and I've managed to get the, the battery clamped up. I've put the controller there. I'm not sure how good this mirror is going to be, but you know, if it's useless, I'll take it off. On this side, um, the controller there, the, sorry, the throttle there, and everything else is standard. Of course, the cables are not ideally situated because they're, you know, they're almost in the way of your hand. So I'll have to figure out a way to, you know, to hold them out the way or something like that. Maybe a piece of wire just to keep them out. I've yet to button everything up and to zip tie it down. Um, but yeah, it's functional as it stands apart from the speed sensor. So there's this little thing here, which is a speed sensor. And that plugs into the front here. Um, but it gives me practically no cable length to actually connect it to any of the wheels. I would have thought the speed sensor would have gone off the controller on the handlebar over there, but it's actually linked to the motor. And now the problem is, um, as soon as it runs, as soon as I fire it up and, you know, move forward on the throttle, which works fine, um, it gets to about one or two miles an hour, and then I get a big red error on the display saying, yeah, speed sensor not detected, um, error 21. So I'm going to have to go back to the supplier and ask them for either for a an extended cable. Some, you know, and this is a four core cable. I really don't want to try to splice that myself. Um, or a way to override something in the firmware or, you know, to change the battery or flash the, the, the management pack on it or whatever. But a way to override that um, that check for a speed sensor. Um, so yeah, that's that's where we are. At, that's where we are at the moment. Um, overall, it's it's a really simple install. I think on a normal bike, it would be a piece of cake. Um, this thing's obviously got its challenges with cable lengths, but you know, if the if the right cables were supplied, it would be easy to do. Really easy to do. Like I said, I'd put that battery on the back. And then, you know, all things like the, the brake light cable. So that's another brake. That's another cable that runs off the motor. And that's like way too short for this bike. I mean, it'll, it won't even connect up to the front boom there. So, yeah, a little bit disappointed with that. Um, biggest thing, like I say, is this, this sensor here with the little magnet. Um, that should have been... Yeah, I think it just should have been different. Um, it has to go on the rear wheel on the other bike, on a standard bike. That's the only place that the cable is long enough for it. So it's just not very well thought out. But yeah, I guess my bike, or my trike I should say, is a bit more of an exception. Yeah, anyway. Um, now I just need to button up those cables. You know, they it comes with a whole bunch of zip ties and tools and whatnot. Um, I've obviously got my own zip ties. So I'll make it a bit neater. I'm still not sure if I'm going to move that battery a bit further forward, you know, right up to the motor, just to give the insides of my thighs a bit more clearance. It's not a problem, but it's it's tight. You know, you can just feel the inside of your leg touching on the, on the back end of the motor a little bit. Um, I'd put a password into the the controller so you you know if, if you want to use it you got to enter a password but still not sure you know what sort of uh, overrides let's put it that way what sort of overrides you can put in place um, obviously it's quite front heavy now so there's a lot of weight over the axle over the you know beyond the front axle with me on it doesn't make any difference because all of my weight's back you know towards the rear of the bike um, so I don't expect any problems with that um so yeah as soon as i get the the battery you know these uh, the speed sensor fixed i'll uh i'll record a video of me actually riding it i think i'm going to drill this take this plate off now this little ventilated plate here drill a little hole in it and then use that 
as a battery mount, uh, sorry, the, the front headlight mount, you know, put a screw and a nut in there. There's nowhere else to mount it anywhere else that I can see, so I'll just pop it in there and just, um, it should be good. And then I also need to read the manual and figure out all of the fairly significant uh, settings and wheel circumference diameters and all sorts of stuff like that, so a bit of reading to do. I did manage to figure out what this is. Maybe I'm just a bit stupid, but I couldn't. When I was trying to pull this out of here, what you had to do is push it. And then it swings open like that. It's actually a little USB, little USB drive. So I'll have a look at that, see what sort of instructions, manuals and stuff I've got on there. So that's the error. Um, as soon as you go like 20 feet, it'll kick in and say, yep, we've got an error here. So I need to figure out how that works, how to get around that.